I'm having SD card issues with my mic. Hopefully I can fix them. <laughs> There we go. You know I love sinking funds and you know I love every dollar. So why wouldn't I do a video explaining everything there is to know about creating and keeping sinking funds in every dollar? Duh. And of course, I'll give you the pros and the cons of sinking funds in every dollar at the end. Cause you know I always have an opinion about everything. Hi, I'm Wendy Valencia, self-proclaimed every dollar power user. I started using every dollar back in 2016, just before we started this channel. And I've learned a lot and I've seen some really massive improvements to every dollar in that time. One of the most recent improvements happened about a month and a half ago, and it was the ability to track and use sinking funds in every dollar effectively. They've had it, the ability for a long time, but they never worked quite right, but they fixed it. It seems to be golden. So as you know, we have a lot of sinking funds and these are our sinking funds. And now I'm going to walk over to my computer. So as you can see, I am back here. I have created a new budget. It's from July, 2013, cause it's easier if I create fake budgets from before than current. We're going to add a new budget group and we're going to title it sinking funds or sinking f funds. Our first one is gonna be a Christmas sinking fund because if you celebrate Christmas, you gotta have a Christmas sinking fund. You're gonna go over to the drop down menu on the side and click make this a fund. And then your starting balance, you can only enter the balance in the month that you're in and then you want to enter your savings goal and for this we're doing a thousand dollars and see that cute little piggy that tells you that it is a sinking fund now if you have any questions about this you want to go how to funds work and that will open up a list of frequently asked questions and you can just go scroll through and it'll take you to the help center and show you what the answers to the various questions are. And I will tell you, he is excellent at explaining step-by-step step what you need to do. It'll tell you, click here, then click here. It is excellent if you have any questions whatsoever. Okay, so now that we've created our sinking funds in every dollar, let's talk about tracking them. So the plans column is obviously what you are planning to put to your sinking fund that month. But the second column right here can be a little confusing. That column can either be remaining or spent if you click this little drop down arrow. So what is the difference? The remaining drop down arrow is the balance of your sinking funds. Plain and simple, it's how much money you have in your sinking fund. The spent column can be one of two things depending on whether you track a positive or a negative in there. The spent can either be the amount you put in or the amount you've taken out or both probably. I haven't done that yet, but I bet it can do both. So what do I think of the fun toggle switch? It's really good if you, one, use one savings account with lots of funds all piled into one pile. So keeping track of individual amounts of money. It is also good if you use cash envelopes for your sinking funds. But if you're like me and use Capital One 360 for your sinking funds, it's probably legitimately just as easy to track them in Capital One 360 because they're already broken out and you can just see the various transactions going on. But it's good for like backup to make sure all your transactions have gone through. So pros and cons. Pro number one, those pigs are really cute. I know, doesn't really serve a purpose, but I think they are cute and it's excellent that you can tell a fund immediately just by looking at it. Number two, it's in every dollar so I can look at the status of all my sinking funds just by scrolling through my budget, which I already probably have open because I always have every dollar open and I don't have to go log on to a totally different website, which is kind of cool. 
and I can just, you know, see a running total of how much I've got going on in there. And number three, I alluded to, I can actually track whether the money has been removed or deposited. So all of those are great for sinking funds. Keeping track digitally is fantastic. So what are the cons? Con number one, the spent column is confusing. Like, is it how much I put in? Is it how much I've taken out? Is it both? I haven't really had to track taking money out yet because I don't use my sinking funds that much. So we'll see when I have a major expense how that works real well and I'll, I'll give you an update when I've done that. But probably my biggest con is that there's no way for it to track interest and I haven't been able to hook it up to the account so that the balance transfers over yet. That would be awesome. I have to hand enter the interest when I get it so my numbers don't really match up because I don't update it all the time because you can only update it in the month you're in, not ahead or behind. So I legit almost never have the exact number in every dollar. So for example, in my car repair replace fund, we have $442.44 actually in the account, but my every dollar says we have $442.16. Not a big deal. It's a few cents, but it's still for a type A personality who wants everything proper and correct, it's kind of a pain. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Does it help? Yes, because you know what? The more organized my money is, the better the choices I make with it. Melina and Mauricio are outside banging on the window. They're problem children today. So I'll see you in the next one. See ya. We're out.